On today's Try to Finish Something, ooh, look, dramatic lighting. Ooh, look, <laughs> I'm wearing the exact same shirt I had in my last build video. I swear it's clean. I, 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 so laundry gets done and my t-shirts get stacked on top of the other t-shirts and I'm so lazy, I just grab whatever t-shirt's on top. I don't put a lot of thought into which t-shirt it is that I'm putting on. It, it's clean, I'm just wearing the exact same clothes over and over again because they wind up on top of the stack. I'll try and get better at that. I honestly have absolutely no idea why I'm explaining all of this. <laughs> if I had just shut up and moved on, you probably wouldn't have even noticed. Let's, let's try this again. Hey, on today's Try to Finish Something, <laughs> I have a build that I'm going to get to, and I was listening to Derek from Van Oaks Props complain about this, and I have the same affliction. I tend to gravitate towards items that appear once in Star Wars, and I don't know why. I'm attracted to something that doesn't get used a lot, and lately Star Wars has been doing that, where they'll have a really cool character or prop or thing and you'll only see it once. Completely underused. Well, I have my season one pre-Beskar Mandalorian. I built an entire kit and it was in one episode. He later upgraded his shoulder pauldron and then had shiny armor. I, I don't have any of that. I have the one that was in one episode. The Shore Trooper is another example. It was in one movie. I built an entire Shore Trooper kit. I got lucky and they did wind up putting it in The Mandalorian and their own season, but when I built it, it was in exactly one movie and the entire planet was destroyed. Didn't stop me from making it and today is another issue of exactly that. In the first season, the first episode of The Mandalorian, Mando gets an ice taxi to head back to his ship across the ice fields. He grabs his ice binoculars and starts scanning the ice fields. Those binoculars were lost to the belly of the beast. I'm going to make them because I've become obsessed with making cases to put things in. But first, I need a pair of ice taxi binoculars and that's what I'm going to do on today's Try to Finish Something. So here it is, the Kodak XL330 video camera. This is the same camera they used to make the screen used prop. And this is also the same video camera that I had in eighth grade. So I knew that this was something that I had to make. And this is a bag of Greeblies I printed from Thingiverse. Someone had modeled some bits to convert a real camera and also to print a camera body if you didn't have one of the real cameras. I will put the link to the Thingiverse file in the video description. I got this one over two years ago on eBay. Star Wars has used a lot of binoculars and I've even made some. I'll put a link right up there. But this pair was seen, like I said, only once and only for a few seconds. And you know, that has me written all over it. On my phone now, checking out some reference images. And I've mentioned this before, but thanks to my Patreon members, I have this new fancy camera angle. Also, thanks to my Patreon members, I am not totally screwed this week. I had set up another camera to get my old angle and that camera died about five minutes in. And I didn't know it until I went to edit. I would have sobbed like, well, like me without a prom date in high school if I had done this entire thing and lost all of the video. By the way, I did have a date for the prom in high school. I was just being funny. I know after I did that podcast, I had some people asking if I needed therapy and I've, have, I've got nothing against therapy. I just try and find the humor in things and make fun of myself a lot. I figure if you can't make fun of yourself, you shouldn't make fun of others. And and I like making fun of others. I'm just trying to sand everything smooth so that I can get some primer on this. I'm going to add some Bondo putty as well and try and get this nice and smooth. Sanding time. Looking at some reference photos, these cylinders to the eye cup seem a bit narrow to me. I feel like they should be beefier and I think I have an idea to bulk them up. I'm not a huge fan of sanding and I sure do do it a lot. And I mean a lot. If you're going to make props, you have to get used to sanding. I see a lot of people make things with their 3D printers and never sand, and I have nothing against that. I personally just can't do that. I 
obsessively sand. I'm telling you, if my next career was robbing banks between sanding, uh, Bondo putty, and super glue, sometimes my iPhone won't even recognize my fingerprints. I'm just taping on a few of my greeblies to a scrap board, and I will take those outside to do a bit of painting. Now, this is just primer filler, and you know what that means. It means more sanding. I want the base layer to be black, so I will obsess about this layer a little bit, and then I will add another layer of flat black and black paint for you. See, the lens is here because this is a real camera, and I would like to try and keep that intact, and that might play into my bulking up idea. I am not 100% sure why I even took this apart. I was thinking it would be easier to paint and decided it won't be easier. And now I'm having trouble getting everything to sit right as I try and put it all back together. There are a few tabs and hinges that all need to line up at the same time. I, <laughs> I think I need another two hands to get this all in place. Hmm. And no, brute force isn't working either. All right, it's back together and it's time to mask this off. I'm going to mask off for my blue and teal layer first, adding a ton of tape to get this ready for some spray. The silver part will be mostly blue and the sides on the top blue too. And it looks like the front has about a fourth of an inch rim of the blue color as well. So I might need to mask that off too. All right, I'm just gonna throw on some more tape and then I will get my blue on it. And I see my issue now as I'm watching this. Just curious if anyone else notices the issue I just created for myself as I am bulk masking all of the other parts to paint. Don't worry, if you don't see it now, you will when I whine and cry about it later. All right, first layer of blue and I'm now dabbing on teal with a sponge. So my story for this build, you ask? Well, I would love to share. So the Ravenac jumped up grabbing the landing gear of Mando's Razor Crest. That beast previously swallowed up the ice taxi and driver. And after falling from the Razor Crest, the Ravenac plunged back into the ice, landing hard, you know, like a beetle against your windshield, and the Jawa being Jawa scavenged the remains, collecting anything that they could, and I bought these binoculars from a local Jawa seller. The Jawa said that it was worn and used, but I didn't know that that meant that they were partially digested, but they will look great in my collection anyway. You asked. <laughs> anyway, I'm now just adding on some of the teal because I want that to show through. And I don't need a ton since this will all get weathering on top of it. I just want the two colors to show through like they did in the photo before I had to enhance the image. Again, my picture has way too much teal because I had messed around with it in Photoshop. Son of a... This was it. This was the part that you probably already saw coming. I had taped over the sides in my hurry to bulk mask everything, and this here, this is me whining. These sides and top were supposed to be blue. The name of the channel should be How to Fix Things That You Screwed Up, because I seem to mess at least one thing up in almost every build. Remask and head outside for the blue and back in for the teal on the top and the side. Sorry, I, I guess I could have just edited all of this out and made it look like I knew what I was doing, but the truth is most of the time, I don't. <laughs> now all of the blue parts are actually blue and teal and I have to mask again because I need to do the rest of it all in flat black. And I probably don't have to paint the black parts black again, but I figure if I am painting over the silver, the black might have a different shade, so I should just paint all of it. All right, black on and unmask, and now it's time for the Greeblies. stupid ball of tape. <laughs> All right, move that. Now, I'm going to just scratch up the surface on the left and add this cylinder in place with super glue. I'm not going to use the accelerator because sometimes it makes the glue a bit more brittle and I want this glue at full strength. Add the stuff to the other side and right here on the front there's a small grill to help hide that Kodak logo and the camera itself has a bit of a curve to it. And how do I get that contour to match the contour of the camera? Well, 
I'm going to heat the grill on my roll of tape, just slightly with the heat gun, then let it cool, and I'll attach that, and the curve matches enough so that the super glue doesn't peel off. I'm just gonna hold it for a little bit, and done. I'm going to add bulk to the eyepieces by cutting pieces of PVC pipe and slip the lens holder into it and glue it all together. What I'm doing here is I'm just sanding the inside of the PVC pipe so that it will slip over the real lens on the camera so that I can actually still see through it. All right, painted those blue and gluing those on and more greeblies to glue on. This top part of the camera has a bit of a curve as well, so I glued one side down and a little bit of heat and press the other side down until the glue kicks. Now just some craft paints with a sponge and a brush, and I'm just adding a few more highlights in a different teal shade to bring out those highlights, and this will all get muted with weathering. Time once again for the brown and black water-based oils for weathering. I'm just putting it on randomly and dabbing it off with a paper towel, and I'm really trying to hit the deep recesses and a few areas that would get handled. Okay, look, weathered side, eh, maybe a little bit more right here, and the non-weathered side. All right, it is time to weather the other side, and I think I'm in the home stretch. I took the silver buckles outside and shot them with brown and black spray paint, and I'm going to just sand off a bit to let the silver show through. And I'm going to add rust. I know, shocking. <laughs> you can't see in the Mandalorian if they were rusty, but you saw the ship that he was driving, and this is wet snow and uncared for equipment, and I'm just going to add it because I think it should be there. And I'm going to add some rust to the seams and some edges of the black. I will also add a little bit of silver scratches here and there, and I think I am finished. Ooh, wait, I keep getting asked what paints that I use, and this is it. Every paint and color that I use in this build, and I really hope that helps. Again, the link to the Thingiverse file I used in the video description, and I think I am finally finished with my Mandalorian Ice Taxi binoculars lost in the belly of the Ravenac. I really hope you liked this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe and tell a friend, and even consider becoming a Patreon member. If you didn't, as always, just keep it to yourself, and we'll see you next time as we try to finish something.